grace to you and peace from God, the one God, who has sent the Son to make the one atonement for the sin of the whole world and the Holy Spirit, who not only works in us the gift of faith by which we receive forgiveness and salvation, but also who unites the members of the Holy Church on earth into one, which we share in the unity of that spirit and the bond of his peace. Amen. The curtains of the tabernacle are massive, about six feet wide, over 40 feet in length, and then the number of them, in part because this is, after all, a traveling people. God is leading the children of Israel on their exodus out of the land of Egypt to the land from which these people originally came through their ancestors. The land that God had promised to which to return them. And as God would have them camp for a while and have that tabernacle erected so that even as it stands above all of the other tents in which the children of Israel dwell, they might see it and be reminded also in this portable house of the Lord that God was indeed dwelling among them, to guard them, to guide them, and above all, to deliver them. And so it makes sense that it would be made in various pieces with loops through which the structural poles, we'll hear about that next week, will be used to provide a skeleton for this structure. And then the tent of goat's hair over that, the skins over that of rams and, sorry, badgers. And then clasps of bronze and of gold to hold those together, to also form the flap through which the priests of God will enter this holy tabernacle. But many, many parts, and yet one tabernacle, one house of the Lord, because this is how God does it. Many different items of his creation working together to form one thing that God would appoint for the service, especially of you, his dear people. It's abundantly clear in the epistle for this day where God is highlighting through the words that that Holy Spirit inspires in the pen of St. Paul, how it's about the unity of the many members of the body of Christ, his church. But that's also implicit in the gospel for this day, where Jesus speaks to the Pharisees in particular, about not choosing the best places when they have gathered together, particularly to celebrate the <coughs> Sabbath meal. They are jockeying for positions of honor, 
I want to sit on the right-hand side of the rabbi, the teacher. No, I deserve that place because I've been a member of this tribe for far longer than you. Yes, but I have a position of prominence, and therefore I should be closer than both of you. When the focus becomes on the unity of the body, that indeed there are many members with various honors, just like this tabernacle in the Old Testament is going to be put together by many different members, having different skills, those of needle and thread working on this tabernacle, those curtains, the larger tents, those skilled with working with wood to make the poles of acacia wood to the exacting specification that God himself prescribes. And then the smiths to clad those poles and their ends with the metals that God himself will appoint. Everyone working together to make one beautiful thing. That's what God is doing among us, too. Not only here, as soon we celebrate our 18th anniversary together, in one day less than a month, and the great things that he has worked here through individual Christians scattered abroad this county or two. He has gathered us together here in this holy tabernacle, in this place, and he has continued to keep us together for all these many years. Despite all of the other bumps along the way of this road of faith. Once upon a time, we had many more people gathering here on a typical Sunday. And now the faithful few. And yet we look forward to the continuation of this beautiful work that God does for this one flock named Good Shepherd Evangelical Lutheran Church. And not just here. Again, you have been blessed to witness what God has done in planting the various missions which have stemmed from this very place. In Winter, in Ironwood, Michigan, in Deer Park, Wisconsin, and now down in Brandon, Wisconsin. All individual Christians scattered among a very vast parish, and yet all united in one body, with interchangeable parts, that you go from one place to another. And while things are done a little bit differently here than they might be in Deer Park, especially when we were meeting in the home there, and now they have moved out are beginning to utilize the Methodist Church right across the street on Saturday evenings, renting that space from that small Methodist congregation there. Meeting in the shop building down in Brandon at the home of our gracious hosts. But all united by God, in the unity of the Spirit of God and the bond of peace. God continues to humble his people together. This is the parable that Jesus is teaching. On the one hand, reminding us that indeed we are all equal in his sight all equally in need of humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God, for we are all equally sinners in his sight. 
before he begins his gracious work with the other hand of exalting you even to heavenly heights because of what his son our savior jesus has done he humbled himself under the mighty hand of his father like unto us when he bears the burden of our sin he, indeed the sin of the whole world humbling himself even unto death even the death the cross so that we might be exalted through him to the status of the children of God again equally every single one of you every single one of you gathered here in this space on this very day is a child of the Heavenly Father your holy baptism attests to that because that was declared in that most blessed sacrament of the washing away of all of your sins and the exalting you to the status of child of God. That's God's gracious work in holy baptism. Washing people of all nations, of all races, of all ethnic descriptions, of all ages, men and women and children and infants, all humbling us under the mighty flood that puts to death the old Adam, the human nature fallen within all of us by virtue of our birth in this world, and in exalting each and every one of you to this title, child of God. God would have us remember that because then we take our appointed places knowing that we're all equal in his sight. And yet some he gives particular gifts like those of needle and thread to put together that magnificent tabernacle and the woodwork and the metalsmiths, and the priests, and the singers, all with different talents and skills and abilities, but all working together, united in one church, in one people, in one tribe, for one common purpose, to glorify God, and to edify each other, to bear one another's burdens. That is to lift each other up when we stumble into sin or when we fall under the excruciating weight that is placed upon us living life in this fallen world as well. That's why we gather here, right? Not only so that you might hear the truth about God's love in Christ for you, but also as we gather together as brethren, as a family that cares deeply for each other. And that we exemplify here what Jesus describes that his church ought to be. People, regardless of whether God has given an exaltation to each of us, that we are nevertheless lovers of each other, united. We hear in the Sixth Commandment, our catechism recitation for this day, about the prohibition of adultery, changing how God has appointed the beautiful relationship of one man and one woman for one lifetime in holy marriage. A unity there between one man, one woman. And that the two become one in that. Same with the church herself. 
Jesus Christ, the bridegroom and his holy bride, the church, the gathering of his people together, united in love for one another and our Lord. And that he establishes his eternal loving relationship with us, his holy body and continues to care and nurture for her. When Jesus calls us to take the lowest place, he bids us to do nothing other than what he himself does. Humbling himself to come to earth, to bear our sin, to be our savior, to die, and then to rise again but then continues to descend to be with us even on this day. Even as the people of God had gathered to eat bread together on that particular Sabbath, where is our gospel begins, that they are to eat together as one united body. So we do, partaking of this one body, this one cup to proclaim that each of us individually and we united together are in holy communion with God through Jesus Christ. And that communion extends the power of the forgiveness that he brings to each of us through it extends in how we live among each other in our congregation, in marriage as an institution and in our individual marriages, in our families, again, as an institution and in our individual families, in our communities, working together for that which is good and right and pleasing in God's sight. It's we who have partaken of the one baptism that unites us with the one true God. We who are one body gathered here together to hear the one gospel of salvation through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. We who are imbibers of the very Holy Spirit of God who attaches himself to the one holy gospel that saves the world from sin and death and hell, if only everyone would believe. We live, unite, in love with each other, in peace. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds, in Christ Jesus. Amen.